Now, we often have at ceremonies like this the conferring of an honorary doctorate and the, the new doctorate, if you like, is uh, then able to, um, to, to give a graduation address. This morning is a particularly important morning, significant morning for this university because we don't have one but two. They are indeed a couple. And accordingly, I now invite the President and Vice-Chancellor, Professor Margaret Gardner, to present the first candidate for the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Chancellor, Mrs. Leslie Gillespie is one of Australia's leading philanthropists and a renowned business and community leader. Mrs. Gillespie co-founded Baker's Delight with husband Roger Gillespie in 1980. Since then, the business has developed into the largest national chain of bakeries in Australia, with more than 700 bakeries operating throughout Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and more recently, the United States. Mrs. Gillespie is a director of um, this very successful business. But Mrs. Gillespie began her journey uh, into this business, philanthropic and community work as a secondary school teacher at a number of schools in Melbourne. She has been recognised in recent times in a number of ways. Mrs Gillespie was the Burundara Citizen of the Year in 2002, shared with Mr Gillespie, and awarded a medal in the Order of Australia in 2006 in recognition of her service to the community through support for charitable organisations. And you will hear why. Since 2000, Baker's Delight has had a lengthy philanthropic relationship with the Breast Cancer Network of Australia. Having raised more than 21 million over the past 21 years to directly support thousands of Australian women and their families through their breast cancer journey. This partnership was recognised with the Prime Minister's Award for Community Partnerships in 2004. Mrs Gillespie and her husband also run the Gillespie Family Foundation, which supports a wide range of community programs and not-for-profit organisations, ranging from secondary school scholarships to research into high-nutrient wheat and research into organ rejection. Mrs Gillespie, her husband and the Gillespie Family Foundation have been instrumental in their support of Monash University's World Mosquito Program. Their support has helped accelerate the program in its international outreach and impact. Mrs Gillespie also chairs the Philanthropic Advisory Committee for the World Mosquito Pro Program. We're also proud that she is a distinguished alumna of Monash University, having graduated with a Bachelor of Science with honours and a Diploma of Education some years ago. In 2013, she was appointed a Fellow of Monash University. She's a member of the Monash Alumni Global Leaders Network and regularly gives of her time as a guest speaker or panellist for student and alumni activities. She's been a delegate at all three of the summits that have brought together alumni from across the world from 2016 through to 2018. Additionally, Mrs Gillespie sits on a number of boards, including the Australian Business Growth Fund, the Institute of Public Affairs, Loretto Mandeville Hall, and she is a very important part of Monash University's Philanthropic Campaign Council as a patron. Chancellor, there are many ways in which Leslie Gillespie gives back to the community. It gives me the greatest pleasure to present to you for admission to the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, Leslie, Leslie Gillespie. And so, with the authority of counsel, I admit you, Leslie Gillespie, to the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa.
Leslie Gillespie and her husband Roger are incredibly important friends of, um, of this university and I now have much pleasure in inviting Dr Leslie Gillespie to deliver the first graduation address today. Thank you. Thank you. What a thrill to be here. Chancellor, Mr Simon McKeon. President and Vice-Chancellor, Professor Margaret Gardner, Dean of the Faculty of Science, Professor Jordan Nash, members of the faculty, ladies and gentlemen, and especially you, the new graduates. What a thrill it is to be sharing this day with you. As Professor Gardner said, I did graduate in science in this very hall, and I clearly remember the day. It was incredibly exciting, and just as you all did, we walked up the steps and we got our degree and we walked down those steps, so nothing much has changed since the 70s. I clearly remember my parents being here and the members of the science faculty. So congratulations to you all and especially congratulations to your families. I know that success in any field is not a solo event and it takes a team. And you, you graduates, you've had the team behind you all the way. We are here at the Robert Blackwood Hall at Monash, Victoria, Australia, because someone or many have helped us along the way. And in fact, Robert Blackwood Hall and the university itself is here because someone or many worked hard. They had an idea, they had a vision, gathered a team together to create this university. We owe them immense gratitude. You have all graduated in science today and you share many common bonds. And going forward, your paths will vary and some of those bonds may not be as strong in the future. But the bond to Monash University will say, stay strong as you advance in your career. We are indeed fortunate to be living in Australia, but good fortune does not happen by accident. Reading a recent article by Geoffrey Blaney, who is one of Australia's great historians, I learned that Australia, ours, is one of the oldest continuous democracies. This is something of which we should all cherish and feel incredibly proud. Australia has been and continues to be the land of opportunity. Our far from perfect system of government, laws and institutions have enabled many coming from less fortunate places to succeed in Australia. As you graduate from this wonderful university, I urge you to continue in the tradition of those before us and strive to make not only a name and place for yourself, but to contribute to the ongoing health and prosperity of our community, our state and our country. Australia will continue to flourish with citizens who are optimistic, confident and focused, and willing to tackle life in the true Australian way of having a go. The university's motto is, Ancora Imparo, attributed to Michelangelo. And for those of us who are not language scholars and mentioned before by Professor Gardner, it means in Italian, still I am learning. This simple sentence reflects the greatness of this man who was credited with this when he was a very young 87 years old. We can learn much from him and his simple, humble words. Graduates, your formal education is behind you. 
for the time being, and you are taking the next step. The next step will be risky. Life is not without risk, but it will be rewarding. The important thing is actually to take that first step. Once you're on the journey, it will not seem nearly as risky. I wish you all the success in the world and remember, Ancora Imparo. And in conclusion, I must thank those who have been part of my life's journey. I am truly honoured to be receiving my honorary doctorate and I thank those who thought I was deserving. And I, like you, am here because of my family, my friends and my colleagues who have believed in me and supported me throughout my life. I have been lucky, very lucky indeed. You don't choose your parents. Mine were wonderful. They, throughout their lives, they have both passed away, stro strove to give me and my brother, who is here today, the best opportunities they could. The fact that I'm here today is due to them. You do choose your spouse, and mine has been beside me for over 42 years, and I think I chose well, so thank you, Roger. Our children have added joy to our lives for many years. As mentioned before, our son lives in Canada with his family, could not be with us. With COVID travel restriction, this has been something we've had to accept, as disappointing as it is. However, it is a joy to have our daughter and her husband here, as well as my brother, also a Monash graduate, his wife, and Roger's sisters and their partners. To them, I say thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you very much, Dr. Gillespie, for a terrific graduation address. But it continues because I now invite the President and Vice-Chancellor, Professor Margaret Gardner, to present a second candidate for the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Chancellor. Mr. Roger Gillespie is also a leading philanthropist and a renowned community and business leader. Mr. Gillespie's first career was in real estate management, but after working in his family's retail bakery business, he started the old style bread chain of center chain of bakeries, which later became Brumbies. In 1980, Mr. Gillespie co-founded Baker's Delight with wife Lesby, Leslie Gillespie and he's currently its executive chairman. As I mentioned earlier, the business is an extremely large national chain of bakeries in Australia and operates not only in Australia, but internationally, New Zealand, Canada, and the United States. As with his wife, Leslie, Roger is passionate about giving back to the community and he runs the Gillespie Family Foundation with his wife and together they support a wide range of community programs and not-for-profit organisations. As I've already mentioned, amongst these for which we are very grateful here is Monash University's World Mosquito Program. We're very grateful because that program is actually about eliminating mosquito-borne diseases around the tropical world. And without that research and without that ability to put um, put centres across the world. I've, I've mentioned Indonesia to you, but we have, we have offices in Vietnam, in Panama, about to be in Brazil. It is a very large attack on a very serious disease burden that would not be possible without the support. And in fact, the way Roger and Leslie have championed that program is very important. Together, Roger Gillespie and Leslie Gillespie and the Gillespie Family Foundation, together with the Gates Foundation and the Macquarie Bank Foundation, 
are the cornerstone supporters and advocates of that program, which will make so much difference and is making so much different difference to people around the world. Mr Gillespie's has been an active supporter of Monash for many years and was made an honorary fellow of the university in 2015. He is also chair of Monash University's Philanthropic Campaign Council and our campaign is called Change It For Good. He's been integral to philanthropy at Monash as well. Beyond his official role with the campaign, he has made a difference to how we are able to extend what is possible for the students and the research of this university. Mr Gillespie's many other community engagements include his appointment as a board member of the Cranlana program, which is focused on ethical leadership that program was created in 1993 by the Maya Foundation to promote informed discussion on matters of responsible and ethical leadership. He um, has also deeply involved with the Australian Retailers Association for which he served as president for 10 years until 2018. He currently serves as director of the Bionics Institute of Australia, which pioneers new technologies to address the unmet needs of patients li living with various health issues, including hearing loss, epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, and diabetes. He is the former vice president of the Scotch College Foundation, founder and president of the Lauriston Foundation, and former chair of the Lauriston Girls' School Foundation. Additionally, he's been inducted into the Hall of Fame for both Swinburne University of Technology's Australian Graduate School of Entrepreneurship and the Franchising Council of Australia. In 2002, Mr Gillespie was named, together with his wife, as the Burundara Citizen of the Year, and in 2006, he received a medal in the Order of Australia in recognition of his service to the community through support for charitable organisations and to business and commerce. Chancellor, it gives me the greatest pleasure to present to you a man whose energy in business has been matched by his energy in philanthropy. For admission to the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, Roger Gillespie. With the authority of counsel, I admit you, Roger Gillespie, to the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Well done. So, for the second time, I now have much pleasure in inviting this time Dr. Roger Gillespie to deliver the second graduation address today. Well, good morning. I think it's still morning. Whether it is or not, it doesn't matter. It's evening in Canada, and I hope they're watching this live, our family over there. Sorry they can't be here. Uh, let me start by acknowledging Chancellor Mr. Simon McKeon, President and Vice-Chancellor Professor Margaret Gardner, Dean of Faculty of Science, Professor Jordan Nash, uh, members of the faculty, ladies and gentlemen, and I save the excitement for the last group, this group in front. What a fantastic achievement. What a range of things the PhD people have been presented, the topics that you're studying, 28 different topics. That's just in the science faculty. The richness across this university is just mind boggling. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you for the acknowledgement uh, you and the university have given Leslie and me today. 
Uh, I would also like to express my gratitude to my late parents, grandparents, family, friends, colleagues, who over many years have shaped me to be the person you see before you today. After seven decades, the shaping and learning continues. And Cora Impara, as the university motto says, still I am learning, and I am, and I love it every day. I continue to be inspired and supported by family, friends and colleagues and strangers. Every day I see people I don't know do wonderful things. I also see people do stupid things. And I take inspiration from both. I'm inspired not to follow the stupid ones, and there are many, many, it's far too many. I'm inspired not to follow them, and equally, or even more so, inspired to follow the smart ones. Uh, I don't think I'll be following any of the PhD graduates. Uh, some of the, most, all of their topics are well beyond my um, capability. Uh, thank you, all who have helped along the way and continue to inspire me, particularly our children, Aaron and Elise, and their partners, or husbands and wives, Dave Christie and Megan Gillespie in Canada. Uh, your true inspiration and your love and support, I really appreciate, and thank you. And also now they're giving us more inspiration with their two children each. So the, we've got four grandchildren and it's fantastic. So that's enough about that side. The future to you, the graduates. Uh, when I was thinking about what to say that might make a difference, not just today, but for the next 50, 60, 70 years, however long you're working, and hopefully some of you will work for another 80 years because of the scientific discoveries that you and others make to extend life and extend, extend productive life, not just life itself. Uh, all I can say, and think about this, all I can say is act like a one-year-old baby. And I can see the faces down here looking and saying, what's that silly old b -b 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 baker up there, you know, going to tell us. Here we are, just graduated from one of the top 100 universities in the world, and he's up there telling us to behave like a baby. I'll explain. We don't see too many... Sorry, when a baby falls over while learning to walk, it does not give up. It, no, it gets up and has another go. It might fall again, it might cry for a minute, but eventually tries again. It keeps on trying until it can walk. I didn't see anyone crawl into this auditorium today because they said, oh yeah, I tried that walking thing when I was young, but it didn't work for me, so I gave it a miss. We all stuck to it and we all achieved it, so think like a baby. Be like a baby, keep trying until you accomplish the task. Don't be afraid to fall, falling's good. We failed in our business twice in America, 1988 and again about 2008, now we're succeeding there. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to cry. I don't mean bursting into tears, but if you have to, that's fine as well. But don't be afraid to be comforted. That's what friends, colleagues, and family are for. Having family, friends, and colleagues to lean on when, when needed is what I'm talking about here. Lean on them when needed. Don't be afraid to ask for advice and help. Reach out, you're not alone. Another reason to be like a baby, they quickly recover from adversity and assume normal default position of a smiling, happy individual. Once a baby can walk, it becomes a toddler. It becomes more interested in more things. As the confidence grows, it starts to move a bit faster, then falls, then gets up, might cry, then gets up. It focuses on a distant goal, runs towards it, and often stumbles. It's adventurous. It's inquisitive. This process continues through life. Fall, get up, start a new venture, start a new inquiry, just keep going. I've been crawling, walking and falling for decades. Long may it continue, at least for another two or three decades, I would hope. Uh, sometimes you might need a reset in your thinking about a job, a relationship or any big decision. Stand back and pretend you're a toddler. Just cool your heels a bit. Then focus on your goal. Go for it without fear of failure, knowing that if you fail, you will recover and go forward because life is an adventure full of mystery. 
In conclusion, we are all in debt to past generations. I'm not talking about the budget debt announced last week. I'm talking about the work, creativity and sacrifices made by many generations to create the wonderful world in which we live today. It is wonderful and it keeps getting better and it's institutions like Monash and you wonderful students in front of us who will continue that process and make the world a better place. One way to acknowledge this debt is to work towards being the best you can be at whatever you do in life. And I think the best way to, to do that is, and I'm sure some of you always guess what I'm going to say, live like a baby. Congratulations again. Now, when you walk out of this room, go out, fall over, start toddling through life. Thank you very much. Well, that's been a very special graduation ceremony with two fabulous addresses. You now know a little what I've known for some years as I've got to know Leslie and Roger. They are a truly extraordinary couple. Yes, success written all over everything that they have done. But unlike perhaps some who reach a certain stage of our lives, because I'm around about the same age, I think, and we start to relax, so-called enjoy the good things of life. Leslie and Roger have done quite the reverse. They have simply continued to look around for opportunities in which their talents, time, money, etc., can be put to good use. Their achievements are extraordinary and I think the wonderful privilege of all of us in this big room this morning has been their candour, their honesty. It would have been easy for them just to talk about their extraordinary success, but interestingly they didn't dwell on that. They dwelt on the stuff that we can all receive to improve our own lives. Leslie herself started by acknowledging the team behind her. She went right back to when she was a graduate and acknowledged her parents, who are no longer with us, family. And she went on to say, you know, find the opportunities that you can contribute to. Be optimistic, have a go. Take the first step. It's often the case thereafter that the journey is not too bad at all, but some of us simply can't quite take that first step. And interestingly, Leslie finished where she started, namely acknowledging her family, acknowledging those around her who enabled her to be where she is today. With Roger, we'll never forget to behave like a one-year-old. In fact, um, Roger, I'm really glad you said that in the next meeting that I'm with you in and you admonish me for inappropriate behaviour, I'll just say I'm doing what you said, to be a one-year-old. But seriously, he's spot on, isn't he? because that one-year-old who knows in some senses so little just has a go at keeping going. Doesn't work the first time, as Roger said, we keep trying and trying and trying. Isn't it sad as we get older to lose that trait? Don't be afraid to fall, don't be afraid to cry, and don't be afraid to be confronted by the, uh, comforted by those around us, particularly family, when we're at a low ebb. Gratefully receive support, be open about receiving support, and then keep going. These have been two very, very special addresses this morning. I'd ask you again to, uh, to thank the Gillespies. <laughs>